Hi everyone, this is Zon with Repro Products. Um, it was a request by a user to create a column from scratch, an architectural column that is an architectural round column or half round. So I'm not sure exactly what um, the user is trying to think about, but uh, let's start in Revit and try to get an idea of what they want and then we'll build something from there. Uh, I have Revit 2018.2 open up and if we go to the structure tab of the ribbon uh, we've got the column command here and if you start the column command you've got different column types to pick from we can load more if we need to and when you do so you just pick the type of material that you want to work with and the type of um, uh, size that you need so for example maybe I look at the wood for a second and now I want to look for something that is round so we'll just do this round column for a second. Pick any size, it comes in, and um, you can place it. Now, if I'm thinking correctly for an architectural column, we're going to place the um, wall here. And if I place an architectural column, which is here, um, they have different sizes and different styles, so we can load more. And this time, don't go to structural column, go to uh, just columns. This is what the architectural columns are and they have a round one for you. And then pick the size that you need and then place it and you'll notice that it, get eat, it gets eaten up by the wall. Now if I change this wall type and we change the level of detail to medium, you can see that it gets eaten up by that wall. So my best guess is that the end user wants to create an architectural half round column. So if you want to, theoretically, you can take this um, standard round architectural column and place it so that it is um, half of it is aligned and locked to the wall and it'll look like a uh, round architectural column that's in the wall. So that's one possible understanding of what they want. Now, if they want to do their own custom column that's a round column for some reason, um, then that's a different approach. And that would require that you build a family from scratch or pick it from a different manufacturer or somebody's already drawn it. So here I'll click New to create a new family. And if I click column.rft, I'm creating an architectural column that has no structural capability. If I go down here and I pick structural column, structural framing, um, there, structural column, I can create one that is structural in nature. So it depends on what you're trying to do, if it's for structural um, analytical purposes or putting loads. So for now, since he said architectural half round, I'm just going to work off of column. Open it up and you'll get a family that starts off like this. And you have equality on both sides, a depth of two inches and a width of two inches. And those are parameters that are already built in, as you can see here. And they are type property. So if I want to create a round column, the first thing I want to think about is if it's a half round column, probably going half round from here to here and here and then across. Also, think about the base of the column and the tops of the column as well. So for now, I'm going to go to assume that we'll do an extrusion that is a half circular extrusion and I'll put the center point there and I'll put that one right there and then I'll draw a straight line across from here to here and I'll lock that and then I'll clean this up like so now in regards to the extrusion height you want to go to the front of the elevation and finish it and you can see the height let me shade it up so you can see it. And if this is the body of the column, we want to stretch it up a little bit. And then we have to do the same approach for the base of the column. So a lot of times you'll want to create a reference plane for the base and a reference plane for the top. And give that a distance that you need. Let's assume uh, 5 inches. And assume 5 inches for now. Now if you need that to be um, a size that doesn't change, you'll want to dimension it and lock it. And that way you know your base and your top will always be that thickness.
and then again go back to the floor plan view and do the same extrusion command. And then the other question too is how far out do you want the base to go um, from the center point? So another way we can do this is we can use the pick method and specify maybe a one inch thick um, offset distance like that. And then we can draw the line over here that does not have an offset and draw it from here to here and lock it. Now if we finish it, it'll look like that. If we go to the front elevation, it looks like this. We can take this one and pull it down and lock it here. Take this, pull it up. And the reason I say pull it up is because you need to pull the base back down and align a lock to that reference plane so it stays put. This one here, you can pull that down and align a lock to that plane and lock it. If I leave it the way it is and look at it in 3D, you'll see it's just a round, half round column with a base. We can repeat the same process for the top as well. So head back to the plan view and, you know, go through that process. So I'll create a simple extrusion. I'll use the pick method with a one inch offset and pick the bottom one and then draw the line without an offset over here and lock that and finish it. Again, head to the front elevation. And this time, pull that top piece all the way up to the top and lock it. And pull the bottom of that extrusion that you just created to that plane and lock it. And then again, pull this so that that top aligns and locks. And if you look at it in 3D, you'll have a 3D architectural column that's a half round. Okay. Now, one thing we do want to double check is if I tile the view so you can see everything. Um, if I decide to go into the family types window and we make a change to say the size of the depth or the width, so let's make it uh, one, in, one foot by one foot and hit apply. Does it update accordingly? Yes, it does. You can see that the size changes and the offset of one inch still holds here at the top and bottom. So now that you've got it created, all you have to do is save it and call it whatever you want, place it wherever you want, and I'll just call it half round arc column, and then you can load it into your project and use it. So if I start a new project, say architectural one, I can toggle back to the column that I made, and I can load it into the project. And then I can just place it. So there it is placed. I'll switch this to a fine level of detail and shade it up. And then also put in a wall. And this time I'll do a brick and metal stud. And if we look at this in 3D, you should see that column get placed. And it looks like that. Um, and so that's a good quick uh, video tutorial on how to create a custom half round architectural column. I know it's a simple one, but that was the best I understood for the request by the end user. Thank you very much.